1639. Colonel Nathan Blair founded the township of Blair, Maryland. One week later, he dies in his sleep. February 1785. A local woman, Ellie Kedward, is accused of witchcraft and labeled the Blair Witch. The woman's quickly condemned to death by exposure by the town folk of Blair. November 1786. Numerous children of Blair begin to disappear. Fearing the town's curse, the residents abandon their homes and move elsewhere. August 1823. A new group of settlers found the town of Burkittsville on the ruins of what was once Blair. August 1825. 11-year-old Eileen Treacle drowns in Tappy East Creek. Witnesses claim they saw her being pulled into the water by an old woman. March 1886. A search party sent looking for a missing 8-year-old girl are discovered disemboweled and tied together in the shape of a pentagram. The place they were found was called Coffin Rock. May 1941. Rustin Parr, a local hermit, confessed to murdering seven children. This came to be known as the Burkittsville Seven. November 1941. Parr is hanged for his crimes. October 1994. Three student filmmakers disappear in the woods surrounding Burkittsville, Maryland, while filming a documentary about the Blair Witch. After an extensive manhunt of the woods that lasts for ten days, the students are never found. October 1995. Nearly one year after the students went missing, a backpack filled with film and film equipment is discovered within the ruins of an abandoned house. November 1998, the website BlairWitch.com is created. The site has crime scene photos, history of the Blair Witch, and leaked footage that the missing students shot. July 1999, the found footage is released titled The Blair Witch Project. September 2016, here we are 17 years later after the release of The Blair Witch Project. Everything has long since been proven to be nothing more than a brilliant marketing tactic that fooled countless people into thinking the footage was real. While The Blair Witch Project wasn't the first found footage film that's often cited as 1980's Cannibal Holocaust, it is the one that popularized the genre. Also, with the line, a year later, their footage was found, is what coined the term found footage. The movie was a phenomenon that took the world by storm, and it was all from the minds of Eduardo Sanchez and Daniel Myrick two film students who shot short films with their friend, Greg Hale. The two met in the University of Central Florida School of Film. It was 1993, and the two were frustrated with the current state of horror. Growing up, they were fans of movies like The Exorcist and The Shining, but now it seemed like horror had devolved into an endless series of sequels or ridiculous slasher parodies. After film school, Myrick and Sanchez, along with Greg Hale, Robin Cowie, and Michael Minello, started Haxon Films. The name was taken from a 1922 Swedish-Danish film, Haxen, which meant The Witch. They were fans of the TV series In Search Of from the 70s, which focused on things like UFOs and the paranormal. They also enjoyed the 1972 docudrama The Legend of Boggy Creek, which became the foundation for the quasi-documentary segments that would become The Blair Witch Project. After coming up with a fake history of the Blair Witch, their intention was to shoot the film in two stages. The first was to have actors in the woods improv while being fed story elements each day. They figured they only needed about 15 or 20 minutes of usable footage. Stage two was to do interviews with actors appearing as locals, then cutting them both together and making it look like a documentary. The script left plenty of room for improv, as it was only about 30 pages that was really an outline of the events. They held casting sessions and hired Heather Donahue, Joshua Leonard, and Michael Williams for the main cast. With the people they interviewed, some were actors, while others were locals. They bought a Hi-8 and CP-16 cameras and gave the trio a three-day crash course on how to film. The initial shoot was planned to run for eight days in October of 1997. They shot the cemetery and some interviews in Burkittsville, then moved to Seneca Crete State Park in Maryland for the majority of the filming. The first day of the shoot was October 24th, which was mostly the cast getting used to each other and getting drunk. Heather was worried, thinking this might really be a snuff film, so she brought a hunting knife with her just in case. The actors were given walkie-talkies to communicate with the directors if they ran into trouble, and GPS units so they wouldn't get lost. Every day, the directors would upload new coordinates into the GPS units for the trio to travel to. They'd leave a milk crate with a bicycle flag on it for them to find. Within the crate was food, water, and notes left for each of the actors in labeled film cans. The food was mostly comprised of power bars and bananas. To heighten the experience, each day the actors were left less and less food. They were always given plenty of water, though. The directors would watch the dailies each night and decide how they want things to progress the next day. They left notes like, You're sick of following Heather around and she doesn't know what she's doing. At the drop sites, the crew would build the tent for the actors each night. The stick men became the iconic symbol of the film, the giant one they named Chewbacca. The directors wanted to ramp up the tension each night, so they'd wait for the trio to go to sleep and then do things to scare the hell out of them. 
They warned the actors about the night attacks, but never told them what they would be or when they'd happen. They'd break sticks, throw rocks, shake the tent, and in what is considered one of the creepiest parts of the film, they played the sound of children through a boombox. One night it was pouring rain, and when they made it to the campsite, the tent had two inches of water in it. They tried to contact the directors, but couldn't get a signal with the walkie-talkies. Thankfully, the GPS units were programmed with escape routes in case of emergency, so they followed that to the house of some friendly locals who let them use their phone and dry off. The directors picked them up and let them sleep in a motel that night, but the next day it was back in the woods. The scene where the group runs out of the tent had to be shot nine times. Every time they tried, the film in the 16mm would come off the track. While they're running, Heather says... Off to the side was a crew member, wrapped in gauze. Josh was supposed to turn the camera to capture the image, but in the only usable take, he didn't turn the camera far enough, so we never see it. The actors were constantly in character. If they ever needed to break character for any reason, they used the safe word, taco. Originally, Mike was supposed to be the first one killed, but after seeing the dailies, they decided it should be Josh. The note left for Josh was to wait for the others to go to sleep, then leave the tent. When Heather finds the bundle of sticks, the remains inside are some of Josh's hair, as well as real teeth that Sanchez was able to acquire from his dentist. That night they had Josh stand on a nearby hill and scream gibberish. He recorded audio of his screams, then went home as his part was done. The next night they used Josh's recordings to lure them out of the tent. The last night they were filming was October 31st, Halloween 1997. The directors packed the two actors up and drove them to the final segment of the film, The House, which was located in Patapsco Valley State Park in Maryland, roughly 50 miles away. While they were waiting to get back to filming, Heather wandered off and shot the now iconic monologue on the spot. She thought she was in frame, but didn't realize the camera was zoomed in, which is why she's cropped off. This accident ended up making the scene all the more effective. The entire segment was improv The two actors had no idea what was in store for them, so when they saw the house, Mike's reaction was genuine. Holy shit. He'd been given directions to run up and then run down, which didn't make sense until he saw the house. The house was the Griggs house, built sometime in the 1800s and abandoned years later. The interior of the house was covered in graffiti, so the crew had to paint the house to cover it. One of the crew brought his nephews in and had them dip their hands in paint to leave handprints all over the walls. Mike ran upstairs, then downstairs, where two crew members in black grabbed him and told him to stand in the corner. Heather came downstairs, they grabbed her, and very carefully knocked the camera over. Heather was so scared she couldn't stop hyperventilating. After that, they went to Denny's for a much-deserved hot meal and to rejoin civilization. When the directors viewed the dailies, they noticed they had no audio for the final scene, so they had to return the next day to reshoot the ending to get the audio. After filming completed, they returned the Hi8 camera for a full refund, and one of the producers sold the CP-16 on eBay. Heather, Mike, and Josh went back to their lives while Sanchez and Myrick worked on the edit. They had over 18 hours of footage shot, not including the interviews and fake documentary footage. As they worked on the film, with each cut, the fake documentary footage got shorter and the found footage got longer. They realized they had a full narrative with just the found footage and edited the film to be just that. The first cut was almost two and a half hours long. They played the film at small festivals and took notes, which eventually led them to cut the film down to around 90 minutes. They were hoping to get it into Sundance, figuring that would be the highlight, and they might be able to get a cable distribution deal. Sanchez built the Blair Witch website, which became hugely popular with college message boards. They slowly released material on the site, and the audience ate it up. This was the early days of the internet, and people were believing that this was real. There were even bootlegs of the film circulating on VHS that had been taken from one of the small festivals. This made it seem all the more authentic. The Internet Movie Database even had the actors listed as missing, presumed dead. They submitted the film to Sundance and were accepted. In the days leading up to the festival, they littered the town with the now-famous missing poster. The movie screened at midnight to a packed house and blew the audience away. A bidding war started immediately, and Artisan bought the distribution rights for $1.1 million. Their original intention was to take the film and remake it with different actors, but after seeing the reactions of people online, they decided to release the film as is, with a few alterations. The first thing they wanted to change was the ending, which they didn't think was scary enough. They brought Mike and the directors back to the Griggs house, where they shot multiple endings. One had Mike standing in the corner, surrounded by stick men. Another had Mike facing forward, surrounded by stick men. Another had Mike hung in the corner. And finally, one where Mike was crucified on a stick man, which made it appear like he was floating. All of them ended with the camera being knocked over. After viewing the new endings, they decided to stick with the original. 
Mike didn't mind the reshoots because he said he was paid substantially more for the brief filming than he was for the eight days he spent in the woods. They did a new audio mix and tweaked the editing, which ended up helping the movie. With the buzz generated from the website, Artisan decided to capitalize on this. Rather than promote this like a regular movie, they pushed this like it was real. They spent a rumored $25 million to market a $25,000 film. During this time, there was an all-out frenzy on the film. The site was bombarded by people who wanted to know more. Myrick and Sanchez took the unused documentary footage and cut it into a standalone piece, The Curse of the Blair Witch. This was played repeatedly on the Sci-Fi Channel. The mockumentary was overwhelmingly received and sent even more traffic to the website. The three actors were asked to keep as low a profile as possible, to push the idea that they were dead. Since they used their real names, the family of the three received condolences on their deaths. The movie opened on July of 1999 and grossed nearly $250 million, making it one of the most profitable films in history. Some people, like film journalist Louise Brealey, went into the film not expecting much and left absolutely terrified. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Ugh. Hey. Been <laughs> what do you think? Fucking hell. The success changed the lives of those involved. Josh was working a catering job, then four days later was on Jay Leno. Mike was able to quit his job as a mover. Heather was offered a role in a Freddie Prinze Jr. movie. The directors had offers thrown at them. Merchandising for the film exploded. Books, toys, action figures, video games, young adult novels, you name it. Fans flooded the small town of Burkittsville, and the town sign was stolen numerous times. Once they found the location of the Griggs house, they went there and took chunks from it, which caused the township to order it to be demolished in early 2000. Even though the movie was breaking records, the studio seemed disinterested in the actors. When the film broke $100 million at the box office, the studio sent each of them a fruit basket. The DVD release was the fastest turnaround from the theater to home video at the time. The movie hit theaters on July 16th and was on DVD October 22nd, just in time for Halloween. Myrick and Sanchez wanted to make a prequel, but Artisan wanted to quickly put out a sequel. The directors weren't interested in that, so they went off to do a romantic comedy, Heart of Love. Artisan forged ahead with a sequel, and I did an entire video on that if you want to know more. After the overwhelming success came the backlash. There were the people claiming the movie wasn't scary, the ridiculous amounts of spoofs and parodies, as well as people genuinely angry the actors were still alive. People hated Heather's character so much, they'd walk up to her on the street and say, I fucking hate you. Myrick and Sanchez had a tough time finding work because no one wanted a rom-com from the Blair Witch guys. During this time, another found footage movie surfaced called The Last Broadcast. It was about a missing group of people that were last seen filming a documentary about the Jersey Devil. The film had a lot of parallels, but was shot before The Blair Witch. There were articles saying The Blair Witch Project ripped off The Last Broadcast and that the creators were going to sue. But the creators of The Last Broadcast dispelled the rumors saying they didn't have any issues with The Blair Witch Project. Years later, and Heart of Love was never made. Sanchez kept Haxon, and Myrick split off to create Gearhead Pictures. In 2006, Sanchez directed the alien revenge film Altered, and followed up with the experimental Seventh Moon and the excellent Lovely Molly. In 2014, the 15th anniversary of the Blair Witch Project, he returned to the woods and the found footage genre with Exists, which was also his homage to The Legend of Boggy Creek. Myrick branched out with the drama The Strand in 2007, horror thriller with Believers and Solstice, and sci-fi with The Objective. So now it's 17 years later. Mike's returned to his moving job and runs a theater with his wife. Heather quit acting after about 10 years and now grows medical marijuana. Josh stuck with acting and has been very successful with it. As of currently, he has 77 credits to his name after The Blair Witch Project. Although he said that's still what he's most known for. Myrick and Sanchez are still directing and currently produce the long-awaited surprise sequel, Blair Witch. Right now, with the buzz surrounding the third movie, Myrick and Sanchez have been trying to petition Lionsgate, the current owners of the franchise, to release a longer cut of the original. While I don't think it'll make the film scarier, I am curious to see more of the footage that was shot. Also, while we're at it, can we get an official director's cut of Book of Shadows so audiences can finally see the real film? Regardless of how you feel about the Blair Witch Project, you can't deny the movie made history and changed cinema. It also changed the way that movies are marketed. Movie studios suddenly realized the power of the internet. In a time when self-aware horror spoofs like Scream and Urban Legend were filling the multiplexes, along comes a little film that obliterates them all. This was pure horror. No jump scares, no comedic relief, and no navel-gazing. It focused on psychological horror and the fear of the unknown. 
While there were supernatural elements at play, we never saw the witch or were given a clear resolution. That's what makes this movie scary. Not being shown everything has your mind fill in the blanks. The horror master Stephen King does a brilliant job of explaining why the Blair Witch Project was and still is effective. In the reissue of Dance Macabre from 2010, he wrote, One thing about Blair Witch? The damn thing looks real. Another thing about Blair Witch? The damn thing feels real. And because it does, it's like the worst nightmare you've ever had. The one you woke from gasping and crying with relief because you thought you were buried alive and it turned out the cat jumped up on your bed and went to sleep on your chest. The Blair Witch Project was the right movie at the right time. Because of the incredibly original angle they took with the marketing, it was the first movie to go viral, before viral was even a term in this sense. On top of all the critical acclaim, the movie won tons of awards, and is frequently placed highly as one of the scariest movies ever made. Beyond that, the film is iconic. Heather's monologue and Josh in the Corner are two of the most memorable scenes in movie history. The filming, the marketing, the distribution, the fake history, everything this movie did was a perfect storm that launched it into legendary status. However, the most important thing it did was remind audiences that horror movies are supposed to be scary. Killed this dead mouse. Witchcraft? <laughs>